Good morning, good morning, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I bring you greetings from the Freedom Worship Ministry, where we love you and we honor God because of the, his grace and mercy that he bestowed upon all of us. And we would like to take this time right here to say happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. As we take this day to honor our mothers that are here with us and those who have gone on before us, where would we be without mama? So Lord, we thank you for all the mothers that you have allowed to come across our path. And Lord, we recognize that mothers come in not just from a biological standpoint, but every time there was a woman who looked out for us, whether it be a teacher, whether it be an auntie, whoever she may have been, you know what? We got to give God glory because I believe mother, mothering comes in different directions. And I thank God for all the women who have poured into my life and made me and helped to assist to make me who I am today. So I just think people of God that we all just take a moment and just give God glory for the mothers that he allowed us to, to have in our lives. Not just our biological mothers, but for those bold women who have stood up and made a difference in our life. And you know, if you got a woman that has made a difference in your life and helped you along your life journey, you and she's still alive, you ought to tell her, thank you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, because there's none like you. And Lord, as we sit here, another mother day, Lord, we thank you for the women that you have allowed to sow into our lives, Father God. We ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you will just bless our mothers. Bless the young mothers today, Father God. Bless the elder mothers today, Father God, as they try to navigate this this thing called childhood, raising children. And, and, and some mothers, or Father God, are doing it by themselves. But I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will strengthen her and bless her and help her to do what you call her to do. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Father God, Lord, that you would just continue to look upon each and every one of us. Search us now, Lord, if there's anything in our hearts, anything in our mind, anything, Father God, that would hinder the move of your spirit in our lives, Father God. Lord, we give you permission to remove it in the name of Jesus. Lord, for we desire a closer walk with thee. We desire, Father God, to be in the place that you called us to be, Father God. We declare that not our will, but your holy will be done. So Lord, look upon our governments. Look upon, Father God, those who are in authority, whether it be on our jobs, Father God, or whether it's even in our household. Lord, we ask you to remember the people of the Ukraine, those who are going through and been through and lost loved ones. We ask you to look uh, to remember those, Father God, who have who was with us last year, but no longer are with us. And Lord, I pray for that child who feels that they are by themselves. I pray, Father God, that you will send a mother in their life, Father God. A, a virtuous woman, a godly woman who was so wisdom, so compassion in their lives. And Lord, Lord, we stand in awe of you this morning. And we ask, Father God, that you would just have your way. As we endeavor to go into this word, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just have your way. Touch the, touch your people, Father God. Not only bless your preacher, but Lord, bless the hearers, that the hearers become doers of your word. Lord, we can't do this without you. We love you. We honor you. We thank you. We honor you, Father God. So, Lord, get the glory. Get the glory. So, bless, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. This morning, people of God, 
I will ask that you will turn to your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. And once you find 1 Kings chapter 3, I call to your attention verses 16 through 28. So that's 1 Kings chapter number 3, verse 16 through 28. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. Now two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, O oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house. And I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth. And we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she laid on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maid servant slept and laid him in her bosom and lay her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. But when I examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no, but the living one is my son and the dead one is, her, is your son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead one is your son and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king and the king said, the one say, this is my son who lives and your son is the dead one. And the other says, no, but your son is the dead one and my son is the living one. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child and by no means kill him. But the other said, let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him. She is his mother. And all of Israel heard the judgment which the king had rendered. They feared the king for they saw the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. Amen. For a few moments, people of God, I would like to speak, preach, teach from the sermon topic, the importance of a compassionate mother. And also with that, I come with a also an additional thought. Mothers, the best gift you can give your children is your compassion. The best gift you can give your children is your compassion. Amen. Amen. Mothers, 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 happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. And I know being a. Uh, from, I, can, I know from observing my mother, my wife, and many other mothers in my family that being a mother is not an easy task. Oftentimes, you know, you're important when you are needed, but when you're not seen to be needed as much, it seems that you can borderline be neglected. But I want you to know, mothers, that you are awesome. Thank God for you. For where will we be? Without mother, where would we be without mama? Amen. Where would we be without grandmama? Where would we be without you? I want you to know that because you care for your children, that sometimes you may begin to feel that you're not doing all you can. But I want to remind you that the best gift you can give them is your compassion. Amen. Now, as we look at this verse, these verses of scripture coming from 1 Kings chapter 3. 
You know, first Kings chapter three, as you go back in your Bibles and research it, you'll find that King David has now transitioned and now his son, King Solomon, is on the throne. And King Solomon has a unique opportunity that was presented to him. One night, as first King chapter three records, he went to sleep and in the middle of his sleep, he has a dream. And in, and in that dream, God himself visited him. And when he visited him, imagine this, y'all. He, God, asked him, what do you want for him? And King, and the, here it is, this young king, this inexperienced who hasn't been living long. It seemed like, you know, he would ask for, you know, I want gold. I want, I want, I want all my enemies defeated. I want to be the best. I want to do this. I want to do that. But instead of him asking the things that would seem very obvious, he decided to ask for something very unique. King Solomon asked for wisdom and understanding. That thing pleased God so much that God said, yes, I'll give you wisdom and understanding. But because of your, your sincerity of your request, I'm going to give you something else. I'm going to give you wisdom, understanding, and I'm going to give you more than what you asked for. I'm going to give you wealth. I'm going to give you a reverence and respect that people that that no king up to you, up to you or after you will have. And he gave him reverence and respect and and his fame and popularity grew all because he asked for wisdom. Now, I want to take this time right here and just bring out two things that I want to share with you today. When your when your prayer please God and when God see that you are unique, that you are genuine, you can expect God to do exceedingly abundantly above all you may ask of think. And I like how how uh, first Kings chapter three uh, points out that he asked for wisdom and understanding. If you would turn to your Bibles over in Proverbs chapter four and verse seven, you will find these words. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore. Get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding mothers, fathers, listen, everybody. The most important thing that we are to amass, believe it or not, it's not more money. It's not a bigger house. It's not even more relationship. What matters the most is that we get wisdom. You see, wisdom is what you need before you make decisions in life. And, and then it says, with all your getting, get understanding. Oh, if we as a as as a people, as a as as a nation, as as just mankind, if we will ever get to the point where we ask God to give us wisdom and an understanding heart, I believe that prejudice will stop. I believe that people will stop judging people on the surface. So I encourage you, ask God for wisdom and understanding. Amen. But let us return back to the scripture because we cause what I what we what we're focusing in on is verses 16 and 28 of first Kings chapter three. Now we see that God has given Solomon the, the wisdom and understanding. He had given him that that gift of wisdom and understanding. And all now here it is right after he gets the gift. He's presented with a unique challenge. Two women come to him, the babies that are very young. And, you know, babies depends on the ethnicity. They may look, you know, at that young age, may look very similar. And here he is he presented with a unique situation that he had to solve. Whose baby is it? And everybody seemed so sincere when they came to him. But we have the benefit of the Bible. And we know that a seemingly hard situation because of the gift of God that's working in Solomon. He discovers and he finds out who baby it really is and rightfully judge. But I don't want to so much focus on King Solomon. That's for another day. But what I want to focus, I want us to focus on is what it says in verse 16, verse 16 reads as follows. Now two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. Now, I know that many of you, you, we know what harlots are. That's another word for prostitute, a, a lady of the night. You know, you know, to have a profession as a harlot was definitely shunned. But here it is. We're going to go into this right here. But I believe that even in the most, um, I guess you would say the most unsavory of, of, of professions, we can learn something from this 
lesson right here. I believe the spirit mentions that word harlot for a reason. We're going to discuss it. So let us let us jump right into this right here, because I believe that we can learn something even from a harlot. Amen. As I was alluding to earlier, I, I, as I looked at verse 16, it says now two women were harlots came to the king and stood before him. Now, listen, why would the Bible mention the word harlot? It could have simply been now two women came to the king. But I believe the reason why the Bible makes particular notice of the word harlot, because here's the thing. Harlot is not just prostitute. Listen, people, unfortunately, look at women who may have children and not be in wedlock as being a harlot. Hello, somebody. And sometimes, you know, people can be harsh. And, 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 and I also believe that the scripture mentions this because, you know, people judge you by your circumstance. They judge you by your situation. And although you may not be a prostitute, but you may be raising a child by yourself. And when people see you raising your children by yourself, people have a tendency to want to jump to a conclusion saying it must have been her fault. She must have been in all kinds of relationship. But I want you to know that don't let what people say about you or your current situation, mother, cause you to feel down on yourself. Because I want to know, I think this also provides us a unique opportunity to do this right here. Don't judge people by their current circumstances or situation. Amen. Listen, listen, everybody got a pass because your pass is not on display. Don't mean that you don't have a pass. I have a pass. You have a pass. Everybody have a pass. And listen, nobody willingly go into a relationship expecting to raise a child by themselves. But I'm here to tell you that mother, if you're raising a child by yourself, be encouraged because God will help you with that child. Hello, somebody. But I want us to remember, don't judge. Don't look too harshly on these women right here. But as we proceed on, on, I just want to make this point that mothers, to be a mother is a high and holy calling. Listen, it's a, it's a high and holy calling and you ought to be honored. You ought to be commended for staying in the fight because I know it's not easy, especially in this time and age where it seems like everything is going up. Seems like sometimes that it's hard to get things to meet and it seems like there's always a need for money. But I want you to know, mothers, that you continue doing what you're doing. Because what I said earlier, what your children need more is not another Air Jordan. They need your compassion. Amen, somebody. Don't beat yourself up because you're not able to give them everything you want. Listen, children will forgive you if, if they grow up and they don't have all of the things that, that they may want or they see their friends with. But they will have a hard time forgiving you if you don't put, that, put forth the time and the compassion in their lives. Amen. Remember, mothers. Your children need your compassion. Amen. But as we go back to return back to this scripture, we, as, we, as, we, as we read earlier, we discovered that there's two women in the house. One had a child three days. Be, there was a space of three days before, be, between two women giving birth. And I like how verse uh, 17 and 18 says, how, how it says like this. And one woman said, oh, my Lord. This woman and I dwell in the same house and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I have given birth that this woman also gave birth and we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. One thing I can say about a mother, a mother is very detailed. This woman was very, listen, I just think women are more, they're just more detailed than men. But look how she said it. First she said that they, they were the only one in the house and she said nobody else was in the house. In other words, she's alleviating any suspect to what was going on, the great crime that she was about to lose her child. But remember, I told you mothers, what your children need more from you than, than anything is your compassion so they go on and they present their case and argument and then all of a sudden king the king solomon in his the wisdom gift the understanding gift that god has given him said bring a sword to separate to separate this baby and and we get one to other because he knew that the true mother would not will be willing to let somebody else have a child to keep her child from danger. And that brings me to a unique point right here, mothers. Why you need why they why your children need your compassion? 
It's because, listen, there's nobody going to look out for your child like you will. Amen. Hello, somebody. I, I know your children are loved by your family members. But let's be real. Can't nobody do it like you do. Listen, I, that's not the, 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 to, to say that you're arrogant and, that, and, and everything. But listen, you know that child. And just like this, this woman right here, she, even though her child was young, she spent quality time with her child. Listen, I, I believe it with all my heart. I heard a woman say that she, that, that it was her children, it was, she went to a school and, and, and everybody was, and all the children was on the playground and it was real noisy and she heard her child cry. And out of all the noise on that playground, she was able to zero in and say, that's my child. And she went to him because listen, a mother knows her child. Amen. Hello, a mother knows her child. I know I, know I got some amens out there. I know I got some amens out there. A mother knows your child. And listen, no greater advocate for your child outside of the Lord than the mother. Amen. He knows your child. So we find out in, over in verse 26, as I was saying earlier, then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child. And by no means kill him. But the other woman said, let him be neither mine nor yours, but divided. Now, this is the same woman. The other woman was in the house. And I got to say this, mothers, be careful who you let around your children. Hello, somebody. Because here it is, this woman. Now, it's one thing to steal the woman child, but she was so filled with envy that she fucked because her child died and and the other woman child would die. She stole him. And then she said, OK, if I'm not going to have my child, yeah, cut him in half. Listen, that she goes to show you, mothers, you got to be careful who you allow in your house, who you decide to be friends. Because, listen, somebody is not happy about you and your children. Amen. So listen, mothers, they need your compassion. And as I looked at this right here, the Lord brought me basically three points that I want to share with you on this Mother's Day. And then after that, I want you to enjoy your mothers. I mean, I mean, mothers, I pray that your children, you know, contact you. I pray that your children take you out. I pray that your children appreciate you, but not just on this day, but every day. Amen. As I was looking at this and the spirit was dealing with me, he brought me three points. That I want you to understand because it said, as I said earlier, mothers, what your children need most from you is your compassion. Number one, a compassionate mother teaches. I need you to hear that. A compassionate mother teaches. Listen, mothers, I want you to understand this. Listen, you're always teaching whether you realize it or not. Your children are paying attention to your attitudes about topics and subjects. Your children are listening to your word and believe it or not, they're taking on your personality. They're taking on to having you mother find out yourself doing some of the same things that your mother did. Hello, somebody. You get to mothers. You are in a very unique position. Listen, you are shaping possibly the next president. You are shaping possibly the next CEO of a Fortune 500 company. You are possibly shaping the next person who will discover the cure to some major disease. Listen, your position is so important. You matter. You are teaching. I need you to hear this. Now, listen to what Second Timothy chapter one and five says. This is this is uh, Apostle Paul uh, speaking to uh, Timothy. He says, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwell first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded is in you also. Right here, he was he was he was um, lauding, he was appreciating, he was paying him a compliment, but really he was paying him a compliment because. Well, his parents, his grandmother and mother, because they had a unique situation. They had a unique influence on their life. And mothers, the greatest thing that you can teach your children. Yes, ABCs are important. Yes, the arithmetic is important. Yes, it's important to tell them how to balance their checking account and, and all that stuff. But the biggest thing and the most important thing that you can you can teach your children is to have a relationship with God. Because there's going to be a time when money can't get it. There's there's going to be a time when they are not going to be able to call upon you. There's going to be a time when they're going to be by themselves, faced with a circumstance, and they need to know who to call on. 
And when you and what you do is, is so important because you teaching your children to have a relationship with God, just like Timothy. Let me give you another point about a compassionate mother. Why your children need your compassion. The com compassionate mother goes the distance for her child. Hey, I want to talk about another mother found in Second Kings chapter four. Verse 27 through 30. If you go to chapter 4, you'll find this Shumanite woman. This woman who was wealthy. She had everything she needed, but she didn't have a child. And she gave, and what she did is she, she, met, she blessed the man of God, Elijah. Uh, and, and basically, she, Elijah said, you've always been good to us every time we came in this area. And what is it that we can do for you? And she said, you know, I have everything I need, but I don't have a child. And he blessed and he he prayed for her and said and prophesied in her life that she was going to have a son. And you got to understand that was very important that day because you as a woman, you know, if you don't have a child, people, other women, other people will look at you like you will curse. Like it's a, it's a reproach if you can't have the ability to actually reproduce. So having a child was important. And then they find out in the space of time she had a child. The child started growing. And one day that child was in the field with his father and he complained of a headache and the child died. And this what this woman did. Because I told you a woman will go to a, a mother, I should say, will go to distance for your child. This is what verse 27 picks up. Now, when she came to the man of God, she found the man of God at the hill. She caught him by his feet. But Gehazi came near and pushed her away. That Gehazi was, was Elijah's servant or, or, or attendant, rather. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask for a son, my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready. Take, a, take my staff in your hand and be on your way if if you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if you uh, and if anyone greets you, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. But listen to what this woman said. You remember, she you go back and read that she had to travel, saddle up her, a beast and had to travel and go to the man of God. She searched because a woman. Will, listen, I should say a mother will go through great length. If it means she has to go to this doctor, to that doctor to get her child help, she will. That's why your that's why your children need your compassion. Listen to what verse 30 says. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives. And as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So she arose and followed. So he arose and followed her. In other words, she went to him. She said, yes, that's fine that you send your assistant. But listen, I need you. Listen, a mother will go to the limit. And, and listen, mothers, that your children need your compassion because your children may find themselves in a situation that not everybody understands. Like I just made a moment. Just like I made a point. Listen. You are outside of the Lord. You are your child's biggest advocate. And listen, that's why your child needs not another pair of Jordans. They need you to go the distance for them. Amen. Be able to go. To, I know some women right now that their child are getting in trouble, in trouble in school, and they didn't stop till they found them the right school and found them the right help. They went through a whole lot. But they went the distance. So I tell you, mothers, be compassionate with your children. Be willing to go the distance. I know it gets to be a struggle sometimes. I know sometimes if you might not have, you, you may feel like you're by yourself. But listen, the Lord is on your side. All you have to do is just trust him, believe, and allow, and ask for the wisdom and understanding, and he will guide you. You're not by yourself, but your children need your compassion. And finally, the third point, as I get ready to let you go today, I want to let you know that a compassionate mother makes a plan for her children. Hear what I just said. A compassionate mother makes a plan for their children. In other words, a compassionate mother sees something going on and they anticipate before that problem comes before them. I need you to hear that. Listen, you'll find in Exodus chapter 2, Verses 1 through 10, you'll find when it, it, it records when Moses was born. And you see, in chapter 1, you'll find that there was a Pharaoh who got, who got nervous because the Hebrews were growing faster than the Egyptians. So he decided to hatch a dastardly plan to kill all the baby boys. And here it is, this mother, she got pregnant, which is Moses' biological mother, got pregnant. 
and, and she had the child in a time where the king of Egypt, the place they were, was killing the babies. But the Bible said that she hid him for three months. Now, you know, everybody around her was probably, they probably said, wait a minute. I know she was pregnant. I think she had a baby because if their child was, was, was killed, it was only fitting that they might say, you know what? How is she so, how is she so fortunate that her child's not killed? So not only did she have to deal with the Egyptians, she probably had to deal with some people who was hurting because you know, hurt people will hurt you. People get envious and listen, she had to hide her child. And when the Bible said when she couldn't hide him no more, she put him in the hands of the Lord, put him in a basket and sealed that basket and sent it down the Nile river. And, and listen, and, her, and Moses' big sister Miriam followed that basket and, and through God's divine providence, it found it in the compassion of Pharaoh's daughter. And Pharaoh's daughter, upon seeing him, fell in love with him. And that's why I'm trying, this is the point I'm trying to tell you, because there's some mothers out there that may not have born that child. But Miriam, his big sister, was a mother. Pharaoh's daughter was a mother and they took care of Moses and, and here it is Miriam, Miriam went to went to him went to uh, I should say went to Pharaoh's daughter and said look I know somebody that can nurse him and here it is at the Bible records that 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 Moses mother gave her gave a child to the Lord God was able to bring that child back to him and then paid her to be able to take care of our own child. Come on, tell you. Listen, God is, uh, God is in it if you learn to seek him. God is in it, mothers. This is why you got to have a plan. And your plan start with giving that child to Jesus. When, you're, when you start to give your child to the Lord, listen, God can do more with that child than you could do with yourself. But you got to have the compassion. You got to yearn with your children to put them before God. And I, I promise you, God will take care of them. So today, my, my, my dear sisters, my, my mothers that's out there, I want you to know that continue to do what you're doing. Continue to seek God. Continue to trust God. And don't get down on yourself if you're not always able to do financially what you want to do for your children. Because really, what your children need more than anything is they need your compassion. There is not a price limit that you can put on your compassion. Because listen, not everybody is, a, there's a, it takes a woman to birth a child, but not every woman is a mother. I need somebody to hear that. And listen, and not every mother birthed a child. Hello, somebody. That's why I said you need to, somebody in there right now that listen to me need to go back and think. They need to thank God. Think, think and then thank God for the number of women who have sold into their lives. So today... I just want to pray for the mothers right now. Um, I just want to seek God for you. Because I know that there's some mothers out there that are doing the best that they can. They want to give up. But I want you to know that God is with you. Continue to seek God. Put as the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. And I encourage you, mothers, stay compassionate. Always have a plan for your children. Know that you're your child's biggest advocate outside of the Lord. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We ask right now, oh Lord, that you would touch women, mothers, everywhere. I pray, Father God, that you would give them, give her wisdom and understanding. I pray for that mother who's having a difficult time with her children, Father God. Lord, I place those children before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, you could do more with that child, that wayward child, than we could ever do, Father God. And Lord, I pray for that mother that's dealing with a child that's, that's addicted to drugs or any other thing, Father God. Or maybe running with the wrong crowd, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would give her strength and that you would touch that child. Lord, I read in your word that you said the king's heart is in your hands. I believe, Father God, that you know how to bring that child back to his or her right senses. So, Father God, bless these, your mothers today, Father God. Encourage them today, Father God. 
If any stand in need, Lord, I pray that you bless them with whatever need they stand in need of. I pray, Father God, that you bless the, the, the new mothers, Father God, those who are waiting to be mothers, Father God, those who may be pregnant even right now, Father God. I pray, Father God, in the spirit that, that Lord, as I stretch forth my hand, that you are that you are laying your hands on the womb of these your these your daughters. And I declare that their wombs are blessed, their children are blessed, and that no evil thing shall come upon them, that they shall be covered in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you bless my sisters everywhere. There are mothers. Those, Father God, who are taking care of children that they may not have birth biologically, but they're sowing into their lives. And bless that, bless that woman who's standing in the gap, whether she be a sister, whether she be a mother who entered into a marriage with a father that already had children. I pray, Lord, that you bless that relationship because it can be a challenge. But no, I know, Lord, that nothing is too hard for you. That single mother, I pray, Lord, that you bless her, that you provide her need, that you cover her, Father God. Give her wisdom, heal her broken heart in the name of Jesus, and touch that child that may not have their mother with them. For I, for I know, Father God, that you will be a mother for the motherless, a father for the fatherless. So, Father God, we need you, and we bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Just want to take this time right here to just wish all you again happy Mother Day. Want to take time to shout out to my mother down in Montezuma, Georgia. God bless you. I love you. And to my mother-in-law in, in Wagram, North Carolina. God bless you. I love you. And to all of you, I, I pray God's blessing upon you. I pray that this, this day be greater and it sees your expectation. And if you are a child, whether you be young or old, and your relationship with your mother is not, where, that you're not on speaking terms. But I just want to call to your attention this. Regardless of the situation, she birthed you. She birthed you. And she's worthy of your respect for she carried you. So I pray that mothers and children can be reconciled in the name of Jesus. And today reach out to your mother. She'd be glad to hear from you. If you're in position to go see her, go see her. That they remember the first commandment as the Bible records with promise is honor your father and your mother. Listen, honoring your father and your mother is a commandment that God has given us. He said that's the first commandment with, with promise. And it could be that some of us are not prospering in life because we're under a curse because we're not honoring our fathers and our mothers. So listen, mothers, your children need your compassion more than anything. And until the next time, this is Pastor Joyner along with First Lady Joyner saying, God bless you. We pray in God's blessing for you. And we believe in God's best. It's going to happen to you. And your ladder shall be greater. In Jesus' name. Now let's look unto the Lord and be dismissed. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with you. Hence now and forevermore. God bless you. Go in peace.